Hi everyone, welcome to GT Coding. In this video, we are going to add form validation to our contact form. We had designed this contact form in our previous video. If you haven't watched it, I will leave the link in the description. You can watch it. And in this video, we're going to add form validation so that if the user submits this form without uh, entering any data, it should say that all fields are compulsory. Or if the user types some invalid email, it should say that the email is invalid. And if uh, there is some invalid name, uh, it should say that the name is invalid and so on. So before getting started with our um, form validation, the first thing you need to do is install PHP. You can head over to Google and uh, type ZAMP and uh, click on this apachefriends.org website and you can download ZAMP for Windows, Linux and Mac. So just go ahead and click on the download button and uh, install it just like all the other applications. Now once you start the software, you'll get a control panel like this. Just go ahead and click on start in front of Apache and MySQL. Now click on admin in front of Apache. And if you see this welcome screen of XAMPP, then uh, it means that you have installed XAMPP correctly. Now what XAMPP does is that it creates a local server on your system so that you don't have to test your website online. So we'll go to our source code and we'll copy these three files and then you have to go to the location where you have installed XAMPP and inside that go to stdocs folder and create a new folder for our project. So I have created a folder called contact me and I'll paste our three files right here. Now the first thing to do is uh, change this into a PHP file. So to change that just change the extension of index.html to index.php. Now if you don't see these extensions, you can go to Vive and uh, check this uh, file name extension checkbox. Now I'll go ahead and open this folder with VS Code. So here's our project opened in VS Code. Now to see our website on our browser, what you have to do is just type localhost forward slash. Here you have to type the name of your folder. So we have named our folder contact me. So I'll just type contact me. So here we can see our contact form. Now the first thing we need to do in our HTML is to add name attributes to all our input fields so that we can access them in our PHP code. So for our name input, we'll type name equals name. And for the email, we will type name equals email. And for the ID, we already have a name attribute. Now for the action, we will leave it as blank because we'll be writing our code in the same document. But if you have a different file, for example, if you have a file called contact.php, then you can type contact.php and whenever the form is submitted, it will go to this page over here. But we want to write our code in the same file. So we'll just leave it as blank. And we also have to add one more attribute called method. So there are two types of methods, post and get. Using the post method, you can uh, send data securely to your PSP code. And if you type get over here, your data will be displayed on the URL. That's it with our form. Now we will start writing our PSP code. So here we will start our uh, PSP code and we will end it here. Now, if you don't have any idea about PHP, I recommend you to watch my PHP introduction video. I will leave the link in the description. Now, first of all, we will echo something out here to see whether it is working. So if I'll refresh this page, you can see that hi everyone is displayed over here. All right, so first of all, we'll create a variable called status and uh, we will type this is my status and uh, if i change this status to echo status over here and if i save this and if i refresh my page we can see that our status is displayed over here so we'll leave this code right here and uh, we will change the status uh, depending on the different conditions of our form input so first of all we will leave it blank 
now we have to write everything inside an if condition where we check whether we have a post method request so we will type if server and uh, here we can type request method and we'll check whether we have a post request method and if that is true then uh, we will type something over here so we'll just change the status to request made so I'll just refresh this and uh, if I click on this submit button we can see that we get request made over here so we'll just remove this and uh, we will start writing our validation code now the first thing to do is access the code from our input fields and store it in variables so we'll create a variable called name and we'll store the data that comes from the name input field so for that we have to type dollar sign underscore and post and inside here we have to type the name that we had provided over here so this name right here so we'll type name over here and we'll duplicate it two more times and here we will access the email field and uh, here the message field now we have our form details in uh, these variables just change the name of the variable now we have these uh, details inside our variables now the first thing we'll do is check whether uh, any of these fields are empty so we'll create an if condition and uh, here we will type if empty name or empty email or empty message so if any of these uh, values are empty then we can execute this line of code so here we can set the status to all fields are compulsory so we'll just check whether it is working so if i click on submit we can see that all fields are compulsory and if i add some data over here and if i click on submit we get this error message because uh, uh, we spelled empty wrong over here so i'll just refresh this page and uh, if i will just check it once more so if i type something over here and if i submit we get nothing and if i submit without entering any data we get this message all fields are compulsory now the next thing we'll do is check whether our name is valid so we'll type else and here we'll type if we'll check two things for our name we'll check whether the name is greater than 255 characters and we'll also check whether it has some invalid characters so str len name is greater than equal to so for checking we will just type 10 and then here we can type a regular expression to check whether we have some invalid characters so if you don't know about regular expression it is a way to um, validate data you can search for regular expression on google and you can find regular expressions for almost anything you want so just type in google regular expression for uh, name and you'll find uh, this data so here in php you have to type preg match and inside here you have to type the regular expression so just type the following code and after this you have to provide the name of the variable so we'll type name so this is our regular expression and what you have to do is check the opposite of this uh, condition so for that we have to type exclamation over here so that if this is not the case then uh, the following code will be executed so we'll set the status to please enter a valid name and we'll just check this out so i'll type some number over here and uh, some details and if i press submit we see that please enter a valid name and if i type some valid name and if i click on submit we see that we don't get any message now we'll check whether we have 
the message displayed if you have a name greater than 10 characters so we'll type something long and we'll type some data over here and if i click on submit we see that we get please enter a valid name so we know that it is working so we'll just change this to 255 characters now the next thing we'll do is check whether the email is valid so here we'll type else if and we have a function in php called filter var so we'll check whether the email is uh, invalid so here we have to type filter var and then the name of the variable email and uh, here you have to type filter validate email we have to see whether the email is invalid so here we have to type exclamation and uh, here we will type status please enter a valid email so now we have tested all our uh, conditions we have tested whether we have all the fields filled up we have also tested the validity of name and email now the last thing is if all these things are uh, false then we have to execute this line of code so in this video we are not going to add this data to our database so we'll just set the status to your message was sent so that's basically it for our uh, php code so we'll just check this out so first of all we'll uh, leave all the fields blank and click on submit and here we see all fields are compulsory we'll type some invalid name and if i press on submit we see that please enter a valid name so if we enter a valid name and uh, here we have entered an invalid email so if i press on submit please enter a valid email and if i press on submit we see that your message was sent now we have a problem with our contact form that uh, whenever we click on submit all the data inside uh, our fields get removed so for example if we type something over here and uh, if i click on submit we get this message over here but all the data gets removed so the user has to type everything again so this won't be a good uh, user experience so for that what we'll do is we'll go to our uh, form over here and uh, we'll add a new attribute called value and uh, here we will access this name from here this name variable from here so that we retain the value so here we will go into php mode and uh, we'll check whether we have a post method request So if you have a post method request then uh, we will type echo name over here so we'll just check this out so we will type some invalid name and uh, if i press on submit we can see that please enter a valid name and we also have this data over here but we have this placeholder uh, in the middle we will fix it afterwards but first of all let's copy this uh, code from here and paste it in all our input fields and instead of name here we will type email now for the text area you have to paste it inside this opening and closing tags so we'll just paste it here and we will change this to message now we'll test it out so we'll type some name and we'll type some invalid email and uh, if i press submit we can see that the data remains in the input field but we have a problem where the placeholder is uh, in uh, the text field when we have data so we'll fix that and we also have a problem with the font so we'll go to our css and first of all we'll fix the font so for the gt text we will type font family roboto and uh, font size of 20 pixels and uh, now we'll go to our main.js file and uh, here we will add one line of code we'll check whether the input fields are not empty over here and uh, if they are not empty then we will uh, add the move up class so 
we will type if gt input i dot value is not equal to is not equal to blank then current label dot class list dot add move up so we'll just save this and uh, we'll see whether this works so if I submit this we can see that it fixes the problem and we also have this um, validation status so if I type some valid email over here we can see your message was sent but when the message is sent we want to remove all this data so what we'll do is go to our index.php file and uh, after the message is sent we will set the name to blank email to blank and message to blank all right so we'll just check it once more first of all we'll check the required fields all fields are compulsory even if we fill two of these fields and uh, press submit we get all fields are compulsory if we type some invalid name we see that please enter a valid name and uh, this is an invalid email please enter a valid email so press submit we can see the message was sent and all the data is removed so that's basically it for our form validation in the next video we'll see how to add the data from these input fields into a database so if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and uh, if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest updates thanks a lot for watching have a nice day